the fun to drive Civic is back and Ocean Honda has given us the 2023 Honda Civic SI in Aegean blue metallic over black and red interior. And through this series, we're gonna show you some of the differences between this and the Acura Integra. Comparing this to a Subaru WRX, you can only option this as a four door. There's no hatchback for the SI. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. The Honda Civic SI starts off with only being a four-door sedan, no hatchback here. Now there is two different grille structures. You have the hatch and you have the sedan. The sedan is going to have the Honda badging lower. The hatchback will have the Honda badging higher. And all of that will brush into your LED headlamps and daytime runnings. The hood will also project a little bit longer because of the way the grille is structured. A weight distribution at 60.6, 39.4, 18-inch, multi-spoke matte black alloy wheels. Front disc reading at 12.3 inches that's ventilated, the rear at 11.1 inches also ventilated. Helical limited slip differential, a front McPherson strut suspension. The rear is a multi-link with three driving mode system for your normal, sport, or individual. The Integra will be almost two inches longer than the SI. This is at 184 inches, same wheelbase at 107.7 inches, and this is almost the same size as the WRX. A curb weight just under three 3,000 pounds, whereas in the Integra, it'll be 121 pounds more than this when you option a manual. If you go into the CVT transmission, that one will add another 80 pounds to it. So you can see why this is gonna be a little bit more sleek, fun to drive, and also the MSRP is a little bit lower too. So you capture most of the Integra on the exterior, but you're backing a little bit more performance because it's lighter. I do wish that they would have optioned a hatch though, because it will make that sleek look. And because of the redesign, they did so much work reconfiguring the back window and the way it was shaped to make it look like a European sport back. And when you get a four door sedan, there's not necessarily a lot to it. It's just four doors with the SI. They do add the spoiler with the gloss black on the lower, you'll get the dual exhaust outlets, reverse camera, trunk release going into 14.4, cubic feet of storage. You have some more storage, no spare tire, split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split, increasing the cargo to the sedan. This is the SI. We gotta go inside, start it up so you can hear that exhaust now. Now this is a smaller turbo engine, so you're not necessarily expecting to get so much out of it for that exhaust though. And they backed the performance with a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, producing 200 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque that's paired to a six-speed manual transmission, achieving 27 to 37 MPGs. That's good for a zero to 60 under seven seconds and a top speed just under 140 miles per hour with a quarter mile around 14.6 seconds. And what do these numbers entail? Well. This is going to be faster than the Integra, whether you get the manual or the CVT. The major difference is it's a hatchback, so you're gonna lose some headroom, which you'll see in the interior, but you'll gain some cargo. The WRX has almost 300 horsepower, so there's really no comparison. It's gonna be faster zero to 60, gonna be faster quarter mile. What you're getting with this is a bargain deal too, because it's under $30,000. When you go into the Integra, it will touch around $40,000, especially if you wanna get a manual transmission, you wanna get it fully loaded, that's the only way to go to really have that fun drive, whereas here, it comes standard fully loaded. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2023 Honda Civic SI as we go inside, go over the tech, and take this for our drive. Going in this SI is going to be the same dimensions 
as the Integra. Headroom, 37.6 inches. Legroom, 42.3 inches. Starting up into the front, the dash layout will be different. The interior for your air vents will be silver with the red around it in a hexagonal shape. Whereas on the Integra, the air vents do not go across the whole dash. The dashboard is completely different. When you option the A-spec for the Integra, that will literally give you red interior accents over ebony, graystone, or orchid. Sports bucket front seat, six-way manual adjustment for the driver, four-way manual for the passenger. Climate control with your nine inch touch screen. We do not have navigation. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, Honda Link. Put it into reverse. We have a multi-angular reverse camera with full trajectory. You can also change the camera positions to make it more wide or line it up. I don't know why you would have a tow, but if that's what you want to do. Working underneath, a storage pocket for your cell phone, two USB ports, and a 12 volt with your driving mode select. Here, you can make it a little bit more sporty. You could do normal, or you can do your individual, or you can tailor it yourself in the infotainment screen here, and you would just customize it for your engine and your steering. Going into your cup holder areas that is carved out for where you would rest your elbows. So it's gonna be more of an armrest backwards, open up inside. It's a deep pocket, it's just a little bit narrow in the width. Six speed manual transmission gets the leather wrap with the leather wrap steering wheel, multi-function, and you get the contrast stitching. The gauge cluster is a digital reader. If you have navigation, you could put it on there. You could do your G-Force. The stopwatch. The door panel integrates into that upgraded 12-speaker Bose sound system. Everyday material with the gloss black, then you get that pattern with the red. Soft materials for your elbows, one touch up and down just for the front windows, and a decent storage pocket. For the back seats, 37.1 inches of headroom, which is about 0.6 inches more than the hatchback for the Integra. Leg space at 37.4 inches, which is the same exact numbers as the Integra. The door panel gets your everyday materials on the top. You get the gloss black. You do not receive any of that pattern that was in the front. It's just gonna be softer materials one touch down, a smaller storage pocket, and even for the seats, you'll notice there's no contrast at all. It's just a simple back with storage behind only the passenger seat. The floor is not completely flat. Sitting into the center, headroom is still no issue. Leg space, I'm grazing the back of the driver's seat in the position I'd be sitting, sharing feet, butt, and shoulder space, but because of the cloth material, easy to sit and more comfortable because you're not really so firm with the cushions here. 200 horsepower, 192 pound-feet of torque is what you get. It's a fun to drive. I mean, anytime you get a chance to drive a manual vehicle, you have rev match and a zero to 60 under seven seconds. So it's gonna be fast enough for your everyday drive. You're gonna get the thrills that you need. I mean, just look at this thing go. It's just a smooth, fun drive. You can always enjoy something like this on a weekend or an every day, and you get great MPGs. It's hard to get a fun to drive vehicle in the $20,000 price point. Yes, this escalates to 30,000 more or less, but it's still inexpensive for what you're getting. Now this is gonna bring me to some things I like and dislike, and that's what we're gonna touch bases with right now. The things that I like about the vehicle is you can fit five occupants, my dimensions, and all the seats without too many issues. It's really hard to do that in vehicles this price point and also for the size. When you're under 185 inches of length, typically headroom starts becoming an issue. They really engineered the new generation for the Civic where everybody can fit comfortably and the seats are comfortable. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is the front windscreen because of how wide it is. They really push those A-pillars as far back as possible and all the windows are large. Typically when you get these type of vehicles and it's sleek in the front, you're expecting it to have more blind spots. Here you don't have to worry about that. Plus it's fully loaded. You get your blind spot monitoring so you don't have to option 
in these things. The last thing that I like is that it's fully loaded, so you don't have to pay for extra options. You get a package all in one. The only thing that you're going to be optioning is maybe some HPD packages in which you're gonna make it look more performance driven. Three things that I dislike starts off with the back seats. You do not get the same wow factor, nor in the door panels. They strip it out and just leave it basic. The second thing that I dislike, you cannot option a hatchback. And I like the hatchback because I feel you're gonna be using space in this vehicle. So you have over 14 cubic feet of cargo. However, when you get into the hatch, over 20 cubic feet of storage. So obviously it's a more everyday practical car and that's something that would be nice to have with the SI. Turn radius at a stop point and we have it in sport mode so you can really get the thrill. Here we go. Now obviously this is not something that has three, 400 horsepower. So it's not gonna throw you back. And the same thing with the torque, you're under 200, which is bringing me to the last thing that I dislike. It's not necessarily under power because you gotta also consider the price point and everything that you're getting. It would just be nice to have 250 horsepower and or 225 pound feet of torque. So that way you do get a little bit more of a wow factor in your daily drive, because this is not going to give you that caffeine boost whenever you're really pushing on the gas pedal and going through the gears. Heel to toe, very simple. If you've never driven a manual transmission, you're not gonna have too many issues with that. Very similar to the Acura Integra. I didn't have any issues with the heel to toe there. Braking in the vehicle, it's gonna be a little bit better in this than the Integra, only because it's less weight. You're saving over 100 pounds of weight, and if you get the CVT transmission, it's over 200 pounds of weight that you're saving. You don't get a CVT with this, they do it the right way. They kept it with a manual, so I like the fact that they didn't say, you know what, let's just throw a CVT like we do with every vehicle. No, they gave us an SI with a six-speed manual gearbox, so they did an excellent job with that. Going back to the WRX, the price to that's a little bit more money too. It isn't necessarily hard to compare it to this vehicle because people that look at an SI will look at a WRX. However, that has a lot more power. So it's a little bit more different. They also now have a CBT. And if you want all the dynamics of that vehicle, you have to get the CBT. The manual transmission does not give you all of the dynamics for your suspension. And that just kind of takes it away from the vehicle. Here, you don't have that. They give you all the dynamics in the way it should be for an SI. Green light, here we go. They don't offer all wheel drive, so it's gonna be a bit tire happy. When you get into the WRX, it's standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. I'd like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2023 Honda SI for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise, website, and Instagram, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.